to another live update with me, Gareth. And I'm Jackie. Hi. So, uh, see Spiracy, it's out. Like, if you haven't watched it already, uh, make sure you add it to your watch list because it is fantastic. Uh, one of the benefits of us being based here in New Zealand is that we're ahead of everyone in, on the time schedule. So, for we got one... to watch it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> it was fantastic. Uh, last night it launched for us, and so um, is what we watched before bed. And I don't know if that was a good idea because I kept on uh, waking up all through the night thinking more and more questions because. Um, if you've enjoyed Seaspiracy, well, we have an interview lined up as well with Kip Anderson and the, <laughs> the director. So, like, we're going to be talking to them uh, possibly next week or the week yeah, after. Yeah, we've just got to wait for them to get the launch over with. I think they might be a little bit busy for the next few days. Yeah, and, yeah, wow, wow like, Seaspiracy was, it, it was just mind-blowing. Mm. Um, it goes to show when we spoke to people like Captain Paul Watson... Actually, that was, a, that was a great thing watching through the film. Yes. Uh, we were like, hey, we've interviewed them. We've interviewed them because there's Captain Paul Watson, Dr. Gregor, um, Dr. Dr. Clapper, Clapper. Um, a few of these people. And um, what I was going back to was when we spoke to Captain Paul Watson ourselves, he was saying how if we were able to see what they're doing out at sea, you know, on land, you know, if we did that to any other land mammal, you know, we wouldn't abide it happening here it just wouldn't happen because people would be so outraged that it would be put to a stop but it's thanks to films like seaspiracy now that they're shining a light on what's happening out there mm. and the the absolute tragedy that that's happening to the animals out there and you know it does also raise some of the um the humanitarian issues as well that are part and parcel with that abusive system and it's just it's absolutely breathtaking that film and yeah. yeah, it's it's really it's helped to light a fire in my belly and I, I wanna <laughs> I wanna go and, and save all the fish and the whales and the dolphins and and everything. And I think, you know, as as a lot of you may know, um it's made by um AUM Films who um, you know, Kip Anderson was a producer behind What the Health and also Cowspiracy and you know, when we look at it, things like cowspiracy where there are farmed animals and, and, you know, we see a lot of that all the time. We know the awful things that happens to, to cows and calves and, and pigs and um, all those farmed animals. But sheep, um, sheep, sea, <laughs> sea creatures, <laughs> fish are, you The know. sheep of the deep. <laughs> 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 oh, dear, I'm sorry. It's still early in the morning here. Um you know, they, so much of that is hidden and to actually, I wouldn't, it's not, it's not necessarily graphic. I Don't be put off of mm. it before because, you know, you think it's graphic. I definitely was ugly crying at, at a part of it, but, you know, it's, yeah. It's, it's not overly graphic and they make good use of animations and stuff like that to help bridge some of the gaps between, um some of the segments where, you know, if they were to show the actual footage, it would be really gr uh, brutal and graphic, but they've used animations and stuff like that to sort of, I guess, almost soften the blow and explain the point without having to go overkill, um, to use a probably bad word for that. Isn't yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just so, it's just mind blowing. They, they go into so many great topics and they've aimed it in a way that it's, it really approaches those environmental sort of people, you know, yes, and the people who are so. who are part of this eco hypocrites. I like to call them. Yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> um, so it, it it's good in the fact that it doesn't quite attack them. It, it more sort of says, you know, well, you see, you're doing this, but the major problem is actually that, you know. And it, they, I, I look forward to talking to them and. Uh, talking about how they craft the narrative in order to attract a different audience, you know, an audience that isn't necessarily um, what they aim to achieve, you know, because uh, not consuming uh, any sea, sea life, you know, is one of the goals of it. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's not necessarily that's not branded on it as soon as you enter it, you know. So yeah. uh, it talks about the, the eco sort of conservation type stuff at first, you know, and it slowly weaves you in and yeah. then, it compelling can, from the start isn't it yeah it, it's fantastic and um it made so many great points like uh about the somalian pirates like i'm sure we've all heard of that over the years and you actually find out why they were pirating you know it's not because they just all decided to go yeah homie mateys and like go jump in a boat and loot some people it was um they were pushed to it part to the fishing industry so if 
Certainly, get and check this out. I see Sandra, you've watched it. Um, yeah, it, is it, it amazing? It, it oh is my fantastic. Lord. Like, um, yeah, I just want to like deep dive into so many of the the parts of it, and I've loved the the interview segments that they've done with these different organizations who are supposed to be conservation uh, oh, type things. Yes. I'm watching these people. I don't know why they agree to the interview because you watch them. And they, they stumble over the thing and then they just go contradicting, contradicting, contradicting. And they're just sort of peddling themselves into a corner and like then <laughs> eventually they like, tell them to get out and stuff. But it's just... Yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, mate, what are you saying? <laughs> it's, re it's really engaged in watching people corner themselves, you know, um, on their own stuff. But yeah, it's, you know, it, it's... It's, it's very, it's very important. Yeah, it's very important, but it's heartbreaking seeing what's going on. But then, you know, it's it's been done in such a great way that, you know, it's really compelling to keep watching and finding out more. And as Jack mm -hmm. says, you know, it's not overly graphic. Um, I, I'm, it's not nice, but it's not graphic. Yeah. It, well, yeah, yeah. It's, that's the thing. It's, it's one of those uncomfortable things that, you know, you have to... Uh, lean into you know and as mm. um, part of the vegan movement I think a lot of us understand that you know especially when it comes to things like vigils and other things you know they're things that are happening in our world and we've got to lean into them to understand and see yeah. them um, we need to know this stuff if we want to be better advocates yeah and that is the thing we have so many advocates who are focused on the land-based efforts you know um, but we also need to make sure that we have our advocates who are land-based also mm. focusing on the what's happening out at sea and like uh, Sea Shepherd feature quite a lot in it and for me I I always blame it on my Welsh blood I think there must be coal in me because I seem to just sink when I go in the water and so I, I've got quite a fear of the ocean Same. Um, but watching this and doing the previous interviews that we've done I just really want to get on one of the Sea Shepherd ships and just get out there and start helping with this because it's so inspirational watching what they're doing and such important um, work that you just don't realize goes on if you are someone in the position though go check out the sea um the sea shepherd website and stuff like that because they have these opportunities all the time to get out there on the boats and be helping in these issues so yeah. if that's something that appeals to you get and check out their website maybe you can't do it this year maybe next year i'm starting to think you know um maybe at some stage we'll have to have a break in the activist series or something we'll, we'll get it steaming away and then yeah. then we'll go jump on a ship for a couple of weeks or something i don't know like <laughs> well some friends of ours are about to go and volunteer they're a couple mm. um volunteering for six weeks on sea shepherd overseas so um yeah we look forward hopefully we'll get a chance to interview them and see what uh, what's been going on but mm. i think if there was one way that i could really sum up sea spiracy and i know a lot of people have said the same um I would say that watching sea spiracy made me lose a lot of faith in the human race but it also really made me want to do something and that's the important thing you know it's a real call to action especially at the end of the film where you know there is that boom moment right this is what we've got to do uh, I won't give away what that is but yeah it's you know all is not lost and especially with with films like this that is, mm -hmm. is getting it out there and making people really want to take action and change their ways yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to interview Kip and uh, stuff and because um, we've got, uh, I think, believe, is Ali getting on the call as Ali well? Ali and Lucy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so they'll be in it too. And talking to them about how we can go forward after the film. And they, as I say, they have a call to action at the end of some of the things that we can do. Um, but it'd be interesting to ask them more um, what we can all do as individuals as well to help further those actions even more and really just keep adding momentum um, to what we can do with this. And mm further our action because this is what we're about at vegan fta is improving advocacy and making uh, more activists out there making our the voice heard for the animals you know we we're all about trying to yeah. get to that that stage and um yeah it's another brilliant documentary that is just helping to get more people mm -hmm. into this uh this realm so we can actually start saving the animals you know whether they be aquatic or land-based so yeah. it's absolutely fantastic it's got the potential to make enormous change around the world so please you know if you've got netflix watch it tell your friends and family to watch it tell anyone who likes to go fishing to watch it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i everyone needs to watch it everyone needs to watch it <laughs> i i 
I feel naughty. I, I really want to go down to the beach down near us, and quite often we see fishermen there and go start snapping some rods and stuff. <laughs> it's interesting, actually. We we talk out in the Sea Spiracy talks about uh, beach cleanups, which is how um, Ali first started getting hmm. involved in, in trying to help um, you know sea creatures and, and things by doing beach cleanups. And Gareth and I, we actually live by the beach, and uh, we do a beach cleanup most most days. And mm, the majority what? of what we get, apart from glass. Um, it's fishing, fishing gear, fishing line, um, and nets. A lot of it is the the lead weight sinkers um, because they get caught in the rocks and stuff. And so yeah, we make sure at least once a week we go off and around the rocks. Um, and there's a little loop that we do. And so yeah, we're going through there. And yeah, it's always the sometimes it's hooks and stuff, but a lot mm. of the time it's line and uh, the weights and stuff. And big old bird's nests of fishing line. Yeah. And and just our oh, cans bottles glass we've actually uh we started our beach walks for uh christmas wasn't it so three mm. months ago and we've already collected about it must be getting done for about 12 13 kilos now just of glass mm. and this beach that we're walking is, is one and a half kilometers and that's actually long. only the um the smooth down glass like the ocean Tumbled, glass yeah um because we still we collect the other sharp stuff but then we end up disposing of that of that um straight away you know getting and recycling that yeah. um but the tumbled stuff we've put into a big jar and we'll have to show it off sometime because it's, it's almost like full now this huge it's like it's a big massive it's like a trophy to our destructive nature on this planet you know and how bad it is so um it's something that's kind of it's supposed to be relaxing that we do it's a nice thing to do we go for a nice beach walk and we, we pick up things at the same time but i end up just fuming and just you know, mm. <laughs> just seething inside at fishermen and, and what they're doing um, and just yeah. the crap that they're leaving I'm, I'm really hoping that this film is going to help uh, spear a lot of people into talking to their local fishermen and uh, pointing out that, you know, the sustainable fishing doesn't really exist because um, one of the analogies that's given in the film um about sustainability is you know like as if you had money in the bank you know and you're only living off the interest you know mm -hmm. you're not touching the the actual fund well the fact is we're in debt you know we're like almost depleted already so you can't say that you're sustainably living off the interest if there isn't even the original amount there in the first place That's and right. you know for new zealand there's a lot of small fishermen who go out you know every week and they'll go out and catch a few fish themselves but the thing is, once again, once we talked to uh, Captain Paul Watson, he said, you know, well, the yep. thing is, if you have a uh, hundred people doing that, that's a hundred people taking four or five fish. That's 500 fish all of a sudden yeah. gone. You know, this is the thing. We all have the impact on this world. Like, this is the thing. We're all individuals. We're all powerful. We all have that mm. ability to create change in the world in our own different way. And just simple actions like going and taking one fish from the ocean is having an impact you know everything we do has an impact so yeah i i'm hoping that sea spirit is just going to be the shaking awake you know like <laughs> it definitely deserves to be and i tell you what really um blew me away was the amount of the the dolphin uh hunting mm. and the dolphin killing that was going on and you know the it, it, I was wondering, just right before the question was answered, I was wondering, why are all these dolphins being killed? You know, they're not being used for their meat, for their blah, blah, nothing. Um, so to find out the reason for that, um, why these dolphins are being killed, you've got to watch it if you want to find out why all these dolphins are being killed and you will be flabbergasted and mm -hmm. disgusted and it's just absolutely insane. And um, as Gareth said, it is, it's because, you know, it, it's not sustainable. Um yeah. And us humans are trying to control that, and pff, we're going to come a cropper big time. Well, that's the thing. Like the ocean is um, the least explored place, you know. Still, it's the the most unknown thing on our entire planet. Yeah. Yet we're trying to control an, an unknown. You cannot do that. It's it's not possible. You know, like if anyone who knows anything about science, you know, it's an uncontrollable variable. Like we don't know what's going on yeah. out there. I read from um, Ian Abina. He's um, been an undercover investigator and spent 40 months out at sea and uh, he said we know more about outer space than we do our deep oceans so yeah. it's insane isn't it so hopefully uh you know really hope that the world is going to embrace this this documentary and um help to create some big old change yeah well um we'll stop rambling all that because we could just like 
Yeah, watch it. Oh, it's wow. awesome. Yeah. Just just do it. Um, and as I say, we've got an interview coming up. So, like, uh, drop some comments if you've got any questions you'd like to mm. um, see us ask Kip and stuff like that. You know, we'll try and factor in them if we can. And, yeah, it's going to be... I'm, I'm really looking forward to that interview and seeing how we can further move on from that movie and make even more of an impact as a movement and as individuals. So, um, yeah, just get and watch Put it on your Fantastic. watch list. Don't let it sit in your watch list, though. We are guilty of that as well for quite a lot of things. We stick it on the watch list and say, hey, I'm going to watch that. i just got to be in the right mood. Don't do not do that. <laughs> Put it at the top of everything else, even Shit's Creek, anything. Just Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, we even had to stop that Dragon Ball binge, you know, <laughs> in order to watch it. So, like, yeah, get in, get and watch it because, yeah, it, it's fantastic and it, it means a lot. Um, it, the, the ocean is the future of our world, so... Oh, yeah, we're um, stuffed without them. We are absolutely stuffed, and that makes it, you know, it's, it's made very clear in in, uh, in Sea Spiracy. So, yeah, we've, we've got to do our bit. Another thing to watch, add to your watch list, is uh, our latest episode of Activist, Ryuji, Peace by Vegan. He is up today. Um, love what this guy has to say. He is so eloquent. Yeah, just love what he's doing also he provided his own uh video and audio and like it is like oh it is crystal. crispy <laughs> crispy nice like oh it's the we're going to talk about this uh this morning in the team chat um we'd love to be able to get our production up to that sort of quality the thing is with these uh web interviews that we do no matter if we get our 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 quality on our side up to a million percent if the person we're interviewing is still on the lower scale, um, the interview is generally 90% on them. So we're sort of trying to decide where to invest our sort of um, tech finances and stuff. So yeah, it's prioritizing. But, you know, we're going to constantly be trying to upgrade things and constantly trying to get to that sort of stage. But when you check out the interview, like, yeah, it... it Ryuji's got a fantastic setup, and so we're actually asking him at the moment. <laughs> We've got setup in me, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and we actually have some huge news coming. Um, I can't share just yet. Like, we were just finalizing some details, but there is a very bright future ahead with Vegan FTA, and, you know, um, yeah, <laughs> we're not going to go down that rabbit hole as well because, like, they, we can, we will. We will talk your ears off. Yes, um, we'll, we'll, we'll wait until we're, you know. But, yeah, it's really exciting. Really, yeah, really it's exciting. fantastic. So, um, yeah, we'll love you to leave you, and there'll be more updates soon. Um, the next episode coming out is going to be uh, Susan, Susan Hargreaves from Animal Hero Kids, and so that'll be out next week, and she's a fantastic interview. I was just about to say, as Gareth would say, she is fantastic, but she is yeah. fantastic. What's that <laughs> We need to get an app or something that counts how many times I say fantastic in interviews and this, because I believe I've probably already said about 10, 20 times in this. So. <laughs> <laughs> the fantastic It's counter. lovely that you're so positive about uh, everything, my love. <laughs> anyway, I'm going full ramble. We're into the bushes now. Like So, um, yeah, we'll love you. Leave you a huge thank you to all of our supporters. It's been great to see that number growing. Yes. And it means the world to us. And it means that we can keep making these series. It means that we can keep putting out this content. It carries us forward and it just fills our hearts with joy. And um, yeah, a huge thank you to all, especially subscribers on YouTube. The channel is growing more and more. It's great to see people enjoying the content. Yeah. Big love to you all. We hope you're all having a fantastic morning, day, evening, nighttime, whatever time it is when you're watching this. And um, yeah, get and watch Seaspiracy. <laughs> we'll catch you next time. Have a good one.